2003, I wrote it, and you know, it sat. Uh, my managers and my agents, you know, all kind of like talked about it being a, a writing sample because they felt like, you know, African American dramas don't get made. And so I said, okay, well, if they don't get made in the five to ten million dollars level, what if we make it, you know, under a million? Can it get made then? And, you know, and then, of course, their argument was like, well, it's hard raising under a million dollars. And I'm like, but I see you doing it for Steve Buscemi. I see you doing it for, you know, like uh, uh, Gary Winnick, who made all of those indigent films for $200,000. You know, what are you saying to me in the larger picture? Are you saying that you, it's hard to raise the money? Or are you saying it's hard for, to waste your time raising the money? And so what I eventually did is I reached out to some people and asked them to independently invest so we could get the film made, you know? And so in that, in that time between 2003 and 2013, I think it took my TV career to build, you know, to go from Third Watch as a staff writer to Sons of Anarchy as a co-executive producer to build a base that I could make a small film and know that it would have some sort of meaning and substance once it got out. Why kill me softly with a song? Why not celebrate my existence? Why not dance in my life and show me love me? Is that too hard to do? I know this has been your outlet since we lost the you baby. Know what? And you should come hear me. Maybe one day. I'm hoping to go to New York and perform at the New York and it's the mecca in regards to poetry. You've never been further than Bakersfield. In my mind, I have. Hey, we're at the Urban World Film Festival 2013, and we just ran into Charles Murray, Hello. who's got a film here at the festival, Things Never Said. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about that movie. Uh, it's uh, Things Never Said is about a film uh, about a character named Calendra Stepney, who's a waitress uh, by day and a spoken word poet by night, trying to, you know, basically find her way through life, through spoken word. And she ends up meeting Omari Hardwick, uh, another spoken word artist, and... Um, having an affair and through that affair basically finding her way and continuing her journey past a dead end marriage that she's been in. Now, is this your first feature film or yes. Yes, Where, how did you come up with the idea for this? Uh, it's sort of based on my mother and father's relationship. Um, there was domestic violence in our house and so I took the stories that she told, my mother told of my father earlier in life and made that character, Omari's character, and the later years I turned into Elimu Nelson's character who plays Ronnie, her husband. Right. And that, that's a big message in the film, but what I, what I thought was most interesting about the film was the way, the sensitivity Omari plays his character, mm -hmm. in the sense that um, usually when Omari's in a movie, he's the player, right. but in this, he's, he's a lot more vulnerable. Can you speak a little bit about that choice? Well, I mean, you know, what I, what I knew of Omari, um, as an actor and as a guy around town, that he was a very, you know, sensitive guy. He's a spoken word poet. He's made, you know, uh, most of his bones off of being an award-winning poet. And, uh, you know, I, I, part of the thing that I wanted to do with the actors was put them in roles that they had rarely been seen in, you know. And so when I sat down with him, when Shinola and I sat down with him and had, like, a long conversation with him about the characters and about the, uh, the arc of the characters, I felt like, you know, here was a guy who had those emotions but had never just been allowed to express them in a role. So, you know, it was, I felt it was my duty uh, to bring him into this film and allow people to see him in a way that they hadn't seen him before. Now, this is a landmark year. There's a lot happening with black film yeah. this particular year. I mean, how, how does it feel to be part of the class of 2013? What's happening with that? It's awesome because, you know, when Spike came out with She's Gotta Have It, you know, people only focus on that. But, you know, as a, as a black person who aspired to be a filmmaker, I also know about Leslie Harris and Wendell B. Harris and, you know, Just Another Girl on the IRT, Sidewalk Stories by Charles Burnett. So I knew of all of those films that came out around that time, and it wasn't just She's Gotta Have It in Hollywood Shuffle. So for me, you know, you know, I've called this a renaissance, you know, so to speak, because, you know, in addition to, you know, the films that Ava DuVernay's brought us, you know, there's the Matthew Cherries, there's me, you know, there's, there are guys on, you know, the West Coast, there are guys on the East Coast, there are guys in the, in, in the middle 
that because of the digital revolution are being allowed to make films that uh, speak not only to who we are as a people, but who we are as a culture and individually as well. So it's been amazing to, to see this happen, to see Ryan Coogler, you know, come out with Fruitvale Station, to see, you know, uh, 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 the old heads, like kind of like look back and say, you know, this is still alive, you know, to spike, get on Kickstarter, you know, something that probably benefited us more you know, and then now turns around and benefits somebody who's one of the originators. So it's it's been a beautiful time. Absolutely. So now, Things Never Said, it's it's playing here at Urban World, but if you're not at Urban World, where can people catch up with the film? Well, I'm self-releasing. So we we started uh, September 6th in Los Angeles, and we're playing in Indiana, Maryland. We were playing in Atlanta and Boston, and now we're moving to Detroit October 11th. And so, you know, we're slowly trying to platform the film outward and you know and eventually like Calendra in the movie get to New York you know and this is why this was so important because now we have a, a, a base of people that can help spread the word you know so by probably by November we'd like to be here in New York but you know we're, we're doing a slow platform release fantastic Charles Murray things never said real black TV the heart, sweetness,